Hello everyone and welcome to episode 2 of my beginner's guide to Unraid. In this episode we'll be going through the initial setup of your Unraid server. From episode 1 hopefully you've built your USB as well as prepped your system. Prior to step 1, ensure that you plug in your bootable USB, ideally into a USB 2.0 slot on your computer. Consult your motherboard manual if required. And otherwise, if you do not have a USB 2.0 port, plug it in to whatever you can. Ideally one at the back, just to protect it, rather than one at the front. But that is really up to you. Anyway, hope everyone enjoys the video. Any questions, please drop them down below. If I miss anything, please do the same. Enjoy. First thing we want to do is enter the BIOS. At the bottom of the screen, you can see you press the Delete or F2 to enter System Setup. For you, these keys might be different. If you're unsure, consult your motherboard manual to find out how to get into those settings. For me, it's by pressing Delete or F2, so I've done that. Then we want to go across to Advanced Mode, clicking that or by pressing F7 for me and then across to the Advanced tab. Then we want to go down to PCIe Subsystem Settings. This is for AMD and specifically for the ASUS motherboard. And then Enabling SR IOV Support. If you're on Intel, find the CPU Configuration Settings and then find Intel Virtualization Support or VT-X and enable that. It has a different name for Intel and a different name for AMD. We then want to go across to the boot section and disable every boot option apart from a boot option number one and then select the USB that we've created in the first video. Ideally uh, the UEFI one um, as we're using UEFI. If you're using a BIOS uh, system, system that uses BIOS rather than UEFI, uh, you'll want to change that accordingly. Save these settings and boot into your USB. Because we've disabled all the other booting options, this will automatically boot into our Unraid USB. Bear in mind, I've sped this video up, or well, specifically this clip up, so yours will take a lot longer to boot than what you're seeing on screen. And there we go. As you can see under the IPv4 address 192.168.1.110 and the Unraid version 6.11.5. Now bear in mind, these numbers will change in the next clip, specifically because I changed a few things and reset my USB key and updated to Unraid 7.0 just to make things a bit easier. Once you've booted your Unraid server using your USB, and you know the IP address to connect from, which is shown on the screen. Go into any web browser. I'm just using Edge for this. And type in the number. So for me, that was 192.168.1.164. In the previous clip, you would have seen that mine has said .1.110. Uh, because I've rebooted it and I'm using DHCP, it's changed it. Uh, among a few other things, but connect to that. And here we are. Welcome to your Unraid server. I've named mine a tutorial server just to differentiate it from my main Unraid server. By default, the username is root. So this is your root Unraid account, and you will need to create a password. You cannot change the username for your root account. This is the account you use to make changes to the Unraid server. You really don't use it for much else. Um, so once you've got a password, definitely you need to remember this and set. And this is your Unraid server. So welcome to your Unraid server. So the first thing you'll notice is, for me, the, the day and time is actually wrong. For me, it is 2 p.m. on the 17th of February. So that's wrong. Um, also, the the icon here uh, showing which sort of system you have, uh, which doesn't matter at all, um, is wrong. For me, I have something that looks a bit more... It's a 
it's probably something a bit a bit more like that. Um, but for me, the day and time time is wrong. Um, so that's one of the first things we're going to change. Otherwise, you can see here this is sort of the activity of your server. So you can see down here the RAM usage, the usage of your flash drive, your connection speed, which you can see I've only got a hundred megabit. Uh, at the moment, so I've got I'm actually using a faulty cable, um, so it's only giving me 100 megabit. But you can see a lot of information here um, about your the active use of your Unraid server. So the first thing we're going to do is change the day and time to the correct location. So click on settings and go date and time. And we are going to go all the way down to Auckland, Wellington, which is New Zealand for me, and apply. Obviously, you'll want to change this to yours. And if we go back now, that is now correct. So just to run through of your dashboard very quickly, you have the actual dashboard tab, which is here. This is the dashboard. You have the main, which is to do with your storage devices, your hard drives um, and your RAID um, arrays. Your shares, which will only be active when you actually have your array started. Users which is one of the first things we'll need to do just in a minute. Settings, which is where we just were to change the date and time. This is also where you'd go look at your VM uh, manager, your Docker. Um, plugins, which we obviously don't have any. Apps, which we need the community application plugin at first. And then tools, which is more about your system configuration. So to start with, we're going to go to users and add a user. Now this uh, will be your user, for example, using it on your computer, accessing your server via uh, the, the file explorer down here, um, and things like that. So just because it is a test account, I'm just going to give it the username JTEC and a simple password. Just be aware you can only use lowercase letters, and numbers, you cannot use capitals or anything like that. So I'm just going to add the account and done. And now you see JTEC. So here's the management account user, which is the root account we created when we first logged in. And then we have the shares access, which is how you would access your files on your Unraid server. The next thing we are going to do is set a static IP address. This means that no matter what you're doing, or if you turn off your server, or whatever it might be, your Whenever you turn it back on, you'll be able to connect using this same number here or whichever one you decide to use. The only exception to that is if you've turned it off, another device uses the IP address, then your server won't connect. So you would need to unplug the other um, other device that is using the IP address. But we're going to go to settings and we're going to click on network settings and change the IPv4 address assignment, not the IPv4 DNS server assignment. They have two different things, from automatic to static. And here you can see the 192.168.1.164, which is what we entered initially. So that's the current address that's being used, but it wasn't static. And we're going to, I'm actually going to leave it as .164, but it means the server will always choose this address. And that's the default gateway to my network. If you wish to use a different number, uh, for example, .123 or .111 or something similar to um, make it easier to remember, then absolutely do so. Leave the 24 as is and leave the default gateway as is. Hit apply. And that has been applied. If we can now hit done, and it'll take us back to the system settings. So now we're needing it to set up some storage. So if we go across to main and select three slots, we will create an array with two drives because I've only got two. One in parity and one in data. So we have a disk one and parity. All data will be erased off the disk. Now with the two drives, I recommend I'd always recommend one in parity and up to maybe three, four or five d data drives before you start using parity number two. You are welcome to use a ZFS using the pool options, but for 
the simplicity of getting Unray set up and configured, I think that array using the actual array itself is worth doing. We will be recording uh, required it to do a parity sync to make sure everything lines up between the parity drive and disk one and make sure everything's happy. So let's hit start and proceed. Now, depending on the size of your drives, this may take several hours or several days. Again, depending. Be aware that you will not often see these errors here. And if you do, that's cause for concern. I'm using relatively faulty drives specifically for tutorial before they get binned or destroyed. Get some extra use out of them. So definitely, if you see errors like this, you should be concerned. The parity sync. Uh, parity sync progress and the parity sync started are absolutely expected. It's these other ones here with uh, correctable, uh, uncorrectable errors and things like that that are a concern. Now if I hit format, and format, there we go, that gives us our data drive with it's using 11.5 and we have 588 free and the parity sync is going to continue it thinks it's going to take about an hour to complete which uh, sounds about right however we can continue while that is running so now that we have an array set up we need to be able to access it and well we can't access it if we don't have anything to access so if we go to shares we have no shares so let's add one, give it a name. Let's just call it storage. Uh, and we'll just call this maybe bulk storage. The comment is just for us, free space will be calculated. Primary storage, the array, which is the array we just created. Split level, because we only have the one data drive, everything is going to be on disk one which is why it's called all and we're not going to exclude any and add. We then want to make sure it's exported or exported with hidden so we can actually access it and public. Now that's been created, we can open File Explorer, go to Network, and you can see my main storage server here called storage server which these days doesn't really apply so much because it's doing a lot more than that but more importantly we see the tutorial server we try to open this it's going to ask us for our credentials these are the credentials in our user that we created here not the root user it will not work if you try to log in with that. So we'll go JTEC and the password. And if you've made sure you've entered the password correctly, you can do remember my credentials. And there's our storage. So we can now create a test and test, save that. And we have our first file on our storage server. If we go into disk one, we can now see storage. And there is our test text file right there, created by JTEC. We then want to go across to apps and install the community's applications plugin. Now you don't need to do this, but you don't actually need to do anything. I would highly recommend installing the community applications plugin as it'll give you much more functionality, much better experience, and access to essentially the App Store. It's very quick. You do need to accept this, as most of these things on here are third party. There are a couple by LimeTech um, that you basically need to agree that it's not LimeTech's fault if you install something and then it breaks your server or causes any data loss or anything like that. So we do need to accept. 
do need to click I understand. And this gives us full access to all sorts of applications and plugins that are going to make your server functionality even better. But that will be for another video.